Everybody knows Gichin Funakoshi as the father of modern karate. But what most people don't know is that he actually got his ass kicked by another Okinawan karate master who came to Tokyo and did not like what Funakoshi was teaching people in mainland Japan. His name was Motobu Choki, and he was the greatest fighter in karate history. In today's video, you're gonna learn exactly who that karate master was, how he defeated Funakoshi, and most importantly, why he did it. Check it out. Motobu Choki was born in 1870 in Shuri, the former capital of the Ryukyu Kingdom, or modern-day Okinawa. This is really important because Motobu's father was a descendant of the sixth son of the Okinawan king. In other words, his family was not noble, it was royal. As the third son in the family, Motobu didn't get that same education and attention that his oldest brother Choyu got, which is why he became a wild and rough child who loved to fight. To harness all of this energy, his family invited Itosu Anko to come to their home and teach karate. Itosu, of course, was the man responsible for bringing karate into the school system in Okinawa, and his most famous student would later become Funakoshi Gichin. Motobu learned karate for many years under Itosu Anko, but unfortunately, he always kept getting beat up by his older brother Choyu. Eventually, he decided to leave and seek out other karate masters who could teach him more practical fighting techniques. Because Motobu used to secretly sneak out to Tsuji, the red light district in Okinawa, and try out his techniques in real battles. And he found out that a lot of the stuff he had been learning didn't actually work. And according to Motobu's own book, after the age of 20, he never lost a fight again, because that's when he started to learn from other instructors to make his karate complete. As Motobu Choke learned more and more karate from different instructors, including the famous Sokon Bushi Matsumura, he became known as one of the greatest fighters in Okinawa. Unfortunately, fighting was about the only thing Motobu was good at. So eventually he had to move to Japan to seek out work because his businesses failed in Okinawa. In the early 1920s, Motobu Choki arrived in Osaka and started setting up his own dojo. But many of Motobu's students didn't last long. And some of his students later said that he ran out of teaching material after a couple of months because once he got the basics down, the rest was just fighting. Plus, Motobu had a thick Okinawan accent and couldn't clearly communicate his ideas like other Okinawans who were more educated, such as Funakoshi Gichin. So Motobu was faced with a choice, either stay in Japan and try to make a living or go back to Okinawa. This is when the famous opportunity to fight a foreign boxer arose for Motobu. After Motobu won this spectacular exhibition fight, his name spread far and wide. And some people actually speculate that the real reason he went to fight was because he had bet money on himself. It was after this event that Motobu went to Tokyo to fight Funakoshi Gichin. In Motobu's own words, he had never heard about Funakoshi Gichin back in Okinawa, but here he was spreading his gospel and making karate popular, something that Motobu himself had failed to do, even though he considered himself a better fighter than Funakoshi. In fact, he described Funakoshi's karate as the shamisen, the three-stringed guitar. It made a beautiful sound, but it was empty on the inside. Funakoshi was about two ranks lower in the social hierarchy back in Okinawa, which is why Motobu thought it was time to put him in his place. Their encounter went down like this. As Motobu entered Funakoshi's dojo in Tokyo, he went up to him and crossed hands with him, assuming the classical position of kakedamashi. This way of testing somebody's skill is still being used to this day, and I actually experienced it myself when I went back to China to rediscover the lost roots of karate. You see, once you cross hands with somebody, anything goes. And according to Motobu's book, at this point, he thought it would be too much to punch Funakoshi. So all he did was twist his wrist and throw him down. 
Funakoshi students later told us that he jumped right back up and said, let's go again. They assumed the Kake Kumite position again, and the exact same thing happened one more time. And believe it or not, Funakoshi tried one more time, and for a third time, he was thrown to the ground by Motobu Choki. After that, Motobu didn't have anything else to prove, so he just left. And according to Funakoshi's own students, ever since that day, his face would contort and get red whenever somebody mentioned Motobu's name around him. And he continually referred to Motobu as the illiterate whenever he talked about him. Funakoshi Gichin's goal with karate was character development and forging great human beings, not necessarily fighters. Motobu Choki said that he would happily kick Funakoshi's ass all the way back to Okinawa so that he could never teach again. But that vision never materialized because by this point, Funakoshi Gichin was too famous and had too many influential friends in the Japanese martial arts community, like Jigoro Kano, the founder of Judo. But that's not all. When Motobu heard that Funakoshi was the first karate master to receive the rank of fifth degree black belt by the Japanese Martial Arts Confederation, he laughed and said, ha, what does that make me, a 10th or 11th dan? It's safe to say that Motobu did not respect Funakoshi's karate. Perhaps he was even a little bit jealous. Motobu withdrew and focused on teaching the few students he actually had left. And to make ends meet, he dictated two books to his students that wrote them down and published them for him. But after a while, he was forced to move all the way back to Okinawa again, where he spent his last days before he died at the age of 74. And to this day, Motobu Choki's karate style remains relatively unknown despite its practicality, especially when you compare it to Funakoshi Gichin's karate style, Shotokan, which is the biggest in the world. And the reason is shockingly simple. Funakoshi's karate was based on kata, which is something that a lot of people could do without any significant risk of injury. Whereas Motobu Choki's karate was focused on kumite, the actual fighting of how you could use those kata techniques in a real fight. For Motobu, kata came second. For Funakoshi, kata came first. And that's why it was so easy to popularize. Plus, Motobu wasn't the most marketable person. Since he came from a royal family, he never had to suck up to anybody, which is really important when you want to get into the politics in mainland Japan. This is something that the other Okinawan karate pioneers, including Funakoshi, had to learn how to do. And that's why politics is still such a huge part of karate even to this day. But Motobu never cared about that. And as a result, most people don't know who he was or what he did but now you do. And if you watch my other videos, you can learn even more about the origins, history, and roots of karate. Thank you so much for watching. Train hard, good luck, and have fun.